Hello, good morning, good evening, good night, or good whatever, uh, whenever you are listening to this. This is Building Modern APIs with RESTful, and I'm Matteo Aguilo, and I'm going to be talking about RESTful listings today. Uh, so we've been talking about this in the couple of uh, the last couple of episodes, and we've been talking about how you can limit the results based on so on the data uh, by doing some filters. Uh, we've been talking about how you can even do filters on the data that is included in one of the relationships of the resource that you're querying. We have been talking about how you can sort items by providing the sort query string parameter and even how you can change the default sort that comes out of the box and uh, say uh, that you want to to sort by another criteria. So uh, what's left for this is that we are going to uh, do pagination. So uh, if we head back to our example, the bands example, uh, you can see that we have here 13 items and uh, those 13 items are being listed, all of them in a single page. So how do we limit that? Um, do we want to limit that? Is there uh, any real need? So uh, by default, and I'm going to show you the point in the code where this is enforced, any, any resource uh, because of the data provider will have a limit of 50 items. And this limit is done because um, in order to load an entity or to load a uh, resource item, there is some uh, some effort that the backend needs to do. Uh, and if it's a, a very big entity, that may be a performance problem if you're loading a lot of them. And when you're doing includes, you're loading all of the entities that are related to that entity. And this can get pretty nasty uh, soon. Uh, in order to uh, the amount of work that you are demanding from the, the backend. So uh, to limit that, there is um, a property called range that you can use in order to say, hey, instead of giving me these uh, 50 items that are going to be by default, if there are those that many, uh, in this case, we only have 13. So uh, we will get at most 50, but since we only have 13, we get all of them. So I'm going to apply a range by doing a query string parameter of range of two. Uh, and uh, what that's going to do is it's going to still have 13 items in total because this count is the total amount of items that there are for this particular uh, view or filter. Uh, since we are not filtering, these are the total amount of items that there are under the band's resource. And uh, it's still going to give us this 13 and we will get some links that will uh, tell us, okay, you're viewing the first two and this is how you, uh, you're you going to get the next two and how you're going to navigate the different pages. So this is not very different of how the pagination in, for instance, views works or in in Drupal core works. So uh, let's hit return here and let's load this. And as promised, there are only two items, uh, although uh, we get the information of uh, the total number of items that there are. And as promised, there are links here, apart from the self item that uh, allow us to navigate the, the API. We can navigate it by clicking it or we could have our consumer to, to say, okay, um, I want to get all of the bands that there are in the, in the backend, but I know that I don't want to load them all at once because I would probably bring the server down. So I'm gonna uh, request a modest amount of bands, uh, let's say two, and then I'm going to inspect the links property, uh, and that is the, the consumer. So a program is going to inspect the links property and see if there is a next link. And if it, if there's a next link, it means that there are bands that I have not uh, gathered yet. So I'm going to keep calling these uh, URLs, the ones that are inside of the links next, 
and therefore I can build my I can traverse the whole listing so uh, you can see that the first item is uh, Silus and since we are sorting by by reverse name like we did in the last video and then the Drupals uh, if we go to the next page we should see two different items so I'm gonna click in the next page or add the page 2 uh, which is the the other query string parameter that comes in playing here the page uh, basically you set the number of items and then the the page that you are on um, so uh, you can see that we don't have the same sorry let me fold this we don't have the same bands here so uh, yeah and it makes sense that if there are 13 records for bands uh, we only have seven pages because there are two items per page so we have the first 12 in in six pages and the last one the 13th in the seventh page so uh, that is how you do branches and pagination and uh, again by default you will have 50 items uh, and that means that if you don't request anything here you will get um, the pagination for 50 items but since we don't have enough data to show 50 items uh, this will not happen so one thing that uh, you need to know is that that max is that maximum is enforced uh, even over the range parameters so if you were to do something like range 100 you would only get the first 50 items and that is because you don't want an outside consumer to be able to put your server under stress so as a backend programmer you can say hey uh, I'm okay with you using ranges but at most I'm going to uh, give you even if you request more I'm going to give you 50 if you need to change that um, what you need to do is uh, going to you don't need to, to change anything in the data provider uh, you need to go to your annotation and oops you need to say range equals and let's say did you say five so let's save and again clear caches because we changed the annotation so by default now it should be giving me five items that's one two three four and five and that's what it gives me by default and even if I request I don't know a hundred items or let's say uh, seven items we know that we have more than seven items so this limit is on force three four and five so uh, a very greedy consumer uh, will not uh, get to bring your server down by requesting too many items so that that's it um, the only thing that I want you to I want to show you is that you can uh, do all this in the data provider uh, because what you are doing here is passing all this information to the data provider but what if you want to overwrite methods on the data provider to change how that works any of these methods uh, how do you do that uh, because right now you only know how to pass down configuration so I'm gonna show you how you can hook a data provider to a particular resource instead of using the default one which is going to be for uh, resource entities it's going to be data provider entity which is data provider entity which is here so how do you change that uh, that's going to be in another video